fellow brother and sister in Islam, I'm your brother in Islam, Husseini Al Qadim Malaysia. In Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu wa Nasta'inuhu wa Nastaqfiru, wa Na'uz Billah min Shuruli Anfusina wa Sayyati A'malina. Man Yahdihillahu Fala Mudillala, wa Man Yudlil Fala Hadiyala. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu wa ba'du. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us, shower his mercy upon us and forgive all our sins. Today insha'Allah we are going to share with you a topic that is important for all Muslims is about Islam, the misunderstood religion. Islam is a religion that belongs to Allah because Allah said in الدين عند الله الإسلام. Indeed, the religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. Islam do not belong to me, don't belong to you. Now, this is the first thing that we must understand. Number one, what is Islam? The meaning of Islam is total submission to Almighty Allah. Number one. Number two, Islam means peace. And number three, Islam means security. That means if anybody accepts Islam, his life is secure here in dunya and also will be secure in akhirah. I mean the security that Islam provides us is not only for dunya but also for akhirah. That means for hereafter. Now after we understand that Islam is a religion belong to Allah, why there is so many people outside is always having negative feeling and thoughts about Islam because they don't understand what is Islam. And I don't blame them because we as Muslim or so-called born Muslim don't even understand Islam. Now you must remember Islam don't belong to you or me. It belongs to Allah. Meaning it's important for every one of us to differentiate Islam and Muslim. I am a Muslim. Every brother and sister is watching this program. You are a Muslim. Muslim means we accept Islam. Not Islam, follow us. We follow Islam. There's a lot of difference between the people and the teaching. When people say anything negative, about the Muslim, we just got to bear it. We got to listen because what they say may be correct, may be true. Because we are not perfect sometimes, we show bad example. But if anybody criticizes Islam, we cannot just keep quiet. Because Islam is the perfect religion of Allah. There is nothing wrong with Islam. If there's something wrong, it's the Muslim. Yeah, it's to be blamed, not Islam. So don't let anybody misinterpret Islam and Muslim. You can say to anybody who, who condemn Muslims, say, maybe Muslims, they are bad and they are good, but don't allow anybody to criticize Islam. When I become a Muslim, the same thing, my family, they don't understand Islam yet. The same go to me, I don't understand Islam though, because I'm new to Islam. But I'm very uh, blessed that Allah Give me hidayah that I do not come to Islam because of the people, because of the Muslim. None of the Muslims call me to Islam, but Allah give me hidayah to come to Islam through my little initiative to look for the truth. If I become a Muslim because of the people, I may just leave Islam because of the people, because the Muslims sometimes show very, very bad examples. But I got to admit that being a Muslim, you must be true to yourself and true to others. But when people criticize Islam, I will never allow that. Because I said, brother, sister, I mean to the people who are not yet Muslim, if you say the Muslim is bad, I can agree with you. No big deal. But if you want to criticize Islam, I said, no, I won't allow you to do so. Have you understand Islam? Have you read the Quran? Have you read the saying of the Prophet? If you read the Quran, you will never criticize Islam. So now you must understand between Islam and Muslim. So you don't call yourself, I am Islam. No. You cannot say, I am Islam. You say, I am a Muslim. 
wa qala innani minal muslimin correct you say i am islam you are wrong islam belong to allah it's a religion not you you are just a follower that is number one number two is very important for us to differentiate between race and religion sometimes it becomes so complicated sometimes a lot of people who don't understand islam they always relate islam with the arabs this is also wrong in my country maybe they will relate islam with malay also it's not correct or maybe in india or pakistan you relate islam with the indian or relate islam with the turkeys you turkeys and you relate islam with the pakistani it's not correct a race is a race allah is the one who created all races he said وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا is Allah who makes us into nation and tribe so all nations belong to Allah whether you are Chinese or Indian whether you are white or colored all of us came from one God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you must remember the history before Islam Arabs they are pagans they are mushrikim they worship idols now the Arab, they become Muslim. They become Muslim. They enter to Islam. That is correct. Malay enter Islam. That is correct. Indian enter Islam. That is correct. Chinese enter Islam. That is correct. But don't make Islam become an Arab religion. That is wrong. Don't make Islam like a Malay religion. That is wrong or an Indian or Pakistani or Turkish or not because Islam belongs to Allah we can follow Islam Islam don't follow us so you must make sure you understand the difference between number one Islam and Muslim number two between race and religion because we are confused when we are confused you make other people confused I know being a Muslim I have been a Muslim for more than 30 years already. I know how confused sometimes the people who are not yet Muslim. But it's our duty to make them understand. If you don't make it and them understand, then you don't blame them yeah, when they have negative thoughts toward Islam. But you are to be blamed. That's why we are here to remind each other the misunderstood religion on Islam is because we do not present Islam correctly. And because of our culture, again, yeah, make people more confused. There are people may think that when you become a Muslim, you must dress like the Arab. No, the Prophet never said you should dress like me. The Prophet said just cover your aura. How you want to cover your aura is up to you, as long as you cover your aura. Beautiful Islam. Is open for everybody. Can a Chinese become a Muslim and dress Chinese dress, Chinese costume? Why not? As long as it's covered the aura. Can an Indian who become a Muslim keep his tradition and dress like uh, the Indian costume? As long as it's covered the aura. There's nothing wrong with the material. It's how you cover yourself. If you say that, oh, to be a good Muslim, you must dress like the Arab. Abu Lahab, Abu Jahal also dressed like that. Why is the difference? What is important is not how you dress, but is you must cover your aura. I'll give you another example. When a person become a Muslim, do you think that he must only eat with his bare hand? Yeah, the Prophet said, eat with your right hand. The Prophet never said, you must eat with your bare hand. You cannot use chopstick, you cannot use spoon or smoke, no. As long as you are right. The Prophet said, La taklu bishimal. Wala tashrabu bishimal. Don't eat, don't drink with your left, but with your right. Fa inna shaitan yakulu wa yashrabu bishimal. Because shaitan eat and drink with the left hand. As long as you use the right, there's no problem. But there are times people, I encounter people who say that, if you eat with chopstick, that means you are like a kufar. Now, how can we say that? Because 
a Chinese, an Indian, or Malay, or Arab, all are Allah's creation. Allah said, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ With the sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, I made you speak different language and different color. All the color, the different culture, the different language, is Allah's creation. Allah said that. He never said that. When you become Muslim, you cannot speak English, you cannot speak Tamil, you cannot speak Chinese. It's a language that Allah created. Only when you pray to Allah in salawat, then Allah wants you to talk to Him in the language that He chooses, that is in Arabic. But other languages still belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same goes to any culture that do not contradict Islam. It's been accepted by Islam as Islamic culture. Not only must follow the Arabic culture, only Islamic. No, even the Arabic culture, if it contradicts, you must stay away. There's one time in the Arab's tradition that if they got a baby girl, they prefer to bury the baby girl alive because that is their custom. That custom cannot be applied anymore because it's un-Islamic. But any culture that do not contradict, you're welcome to show us that how beautiful Islam is. Islam cater for everybody. Islamic culture is a multi-culture because it's for everybody. We cannot say that, oh, you must follow the Indian way, the Pakistani way, the Malay way, the Arab. No, you follow the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also one area that people always misunderstood Islam. When we talk about Islamic law, example, people used to relate to, this is Muhammadan law. No. Please, never say that Islamic law is Muhammadan law. Because if you say Muhammadan law, that means you are talking about that the divine law is something that Prophet Muhammad, who created it, not from Allah. Insha'Allah, after a short break, we'll come back to you and we will inform you more about the difference between Muhammadan law and Allah's rule and laws. Wa billahi tawfiqi wa la'akri da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Assalamualaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. of Islamic laws are impeccable. What about rules of fiqh, fiqhiyah, derived from the Quran and Sunnah? Muslim al-Hakim. Five main rules in al-Qawad al-Fiqhiyah. Explore the evidences that prove the reformative and preventive aspects of Islamic laws in al qawaid al-Fiqhiyah. Tomorrow, at 8.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 8.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. One of the greatest events that ever took place was the birth of the Prophet Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, the mercy to all mankind. His character exemplary, his honesty impeccable, his kindness unparalleled. The Prophet Sallallahu ethics and morals were the Quran. Comprehend how he transformed the world then and for all time to come with his outstanding teachings and behavior. We have to study the seerah so that we can inform others, the non-Muslims, about this about great this man. Great. Behold Sheikh Asim al-Hakim uncover the everlasting impact of the message and ways of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in mercy for mankind today at 5 p.m. and repeat telecast at 3.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to the program. Alhamdulillah, brother and sister in Islam. I'm your brother Hussein Yi from Malaysia. Now, earlier we have discussed about the importance for us to know whether Islamic law is Mohammedan law or not. Or never in our time we should say and agree that people, when people say, Islamic law is Mohammedan law. No. The law of Islam belongs to Allah. It's a divine law, not man-made law. That's why we are so different compared with other laws. Because other laws keep on changing because it's not divine. It belongs to human. Human is the one who come up with this regulation and rule. But Islamic law, it belongs to Allah from day one, from the time of the Prophet until today, until the future. Until the day of judgment, the law of Allah will never change and it don't favor anybody. It applies to everybody and nobody is above law in Islam. Even the Prophet family, he said to Fatima radiallahu anha, Oh my daughter, if you break any rule in Islam, I will act accordingly. If you steal example, I will cut off your hand. The law applies to everybody. You don't have such kind of law in this world today. And there's no law that can protect us and that can give us security except the divine law. When you implement the divine law, you will feel so secure and so safe. Now, if anybody said Islamic law is Mohammedan law, that is wrong. Prophet Muhammad is the last messenger of Allah. His duty is to, to convey the message of Allah to mankind, to tell people the do and the don't. And the Islamic law is not just for Muslim fellow brothers and sisters. If we think that Islamic law only for us, again we are wrong. Why? That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Shahr Ramadan al-lazi unzila fihi al-Quran, khudal linnasi wa bayinati min al-khuda wal furqan. When you talk about Islamic law, you are talking about what is stated in the Quran. Not in any other books, but in the book of Allah. The do and don't. Everything is in the book of Allah. When you talk about Islamic law. And Allah said, in the month of Ramadan that just passed us, is the month that Allah revealed the revelation of the Quran. For who? For me only? For the Arabs only? No. Allah said, Hudal linnas, for all mankind, for you and me. I'm a Muslim, it's for me. People who are not yet Muslim, they are also welcome to follow the law. I give you another example. We, example in my country, we are Malaysian. We have been colonized by the British. The British have left us, we have our independence. But the Chinese, the Malay, the Indian era country is following whose law? They are following the British law. It's not our law, but we can follow. Why? Because we are used to it. We have been educated in that way. Now, Islamic law also is applied for everybody. It's not only for me, for everybody. When people understand what is Islamic law, they will never, never say that Islamic law is not practical, it's not fair. They will find pure justice in the Islamic law. But it is so sad to say that a lot of Muslims are not prepared to accept even the Islamic law. But I would like to call once again and remind myself, when you talk about Islamic law, don't be confused and don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about the government, no. The Islamic law starts from yourself. It didn't start from the authority, no. It starts from yourself. How do the Islamic law be implemented in the time of Prophet? It didn't start with a country. It starts from every individual. If you have problem, how do you solve your problem? Maybe you go to somebody and ask for advice. You go to the court. Have you asked Allah and Prophet to solve your problem? Have you ever, when you encounter any problem, you come to, back to Allah, open the book of Allah, and look at the way the Prophet has shown us how to solve your problem? 
No. So how can you blame anybody than yourself? I always remind myself, the ayat of Allah, that Allah said, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَيْكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ فَأُولَيْكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ فَأُولَيْكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Whoever do not yeah, follow the Islamic law, then he is a kafir. He is a wrongdoer, zalim. He is a fasik, disobedient. This do not apply only to the authority. It applies to every individual. It applies to you. It applies to me. That's why Allah said, فَإِنْ تَنَزَقْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرْدُوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولَهُ if you, are this, you have any dispute, disagreement, in any matter, فِي in any matter, refer back to the book of Allah and the teaching of the Prophet to solve your problem. Now, how many of us obey the command of Allah? Like what I said again, don't yeah, be confused and don't think that I am saying that, oh, we must reinforce. No. You reinforce within yourself. When you have any of those domestic problems with your wife or with your husband, how do you solve your problem? Do you solve your problem by saying, I think I'm right. And the husband says, I think I'm right. Then the husband will use his veto. The man is always right. You see, boss is always right. Who said boss is always right? Allah never said that. We say that. Who is always right is Allah. Following Allah, nobody will go wrong. When you follow Allah, that means I'm not following anybody. Both parties humble themselves and follow Allah. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us by saying, Ya ayuhallazina amanu la tuqaddimu bayna yadahi lahi wa rasuli wa taqullah inna Allah sami'un alim. O you who claim that you believe in Allah, we claim that we believe in Allah. Allah do not first force us to believe in Him. But we said, I believe in Allah, Alhamdulillah. And Allah said, La tuqaddimu. That means you are not supposed to put the saying of anybody, the opinion of anybody ahead of Allah's word and the saying of Prophet Muhammad You cannot do that. Meaning, if you believe in Allah, the Creator, the All-Knowing, the All-Seeing, then you should go back to him first. Why must you go back to other people? Why must you entertain the opinion of somebody to solve your problem? Why not you go back to Allah? Ask Allah to help you by following what Allah said in the Quran. Then you are not following anybody. You don't have to feel bad. Oh, I always lose to my husband. Oh, my husband said, no, I always lose to my wife. Then people will say that I am under the queen control. No. Both parties must humble themselves and put Allah's word and the teaching of the Prophet in front of us. That's why Allah said, لا تقدموا بين يده الله ورسوله Never, never put any opinion, any saying of anybody ahead from the saying of Allah and the teaching of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم Brother and sister, Allah who created us, He know our problem more than ourselves. He know our future. Why not you go back to Him? Please, I would like to call upon every one of us, starting from yourself, then your immediate family. If you have any problem, don't bring this problem to the court. Solve it within yourself, with the family. Because you are the hakim to yourself. So inshallah, we believe that if you come back to Islam, in the way of Allah and the Prophet, you will never create any misunderstanding. Yeah? about Islam to yourself and you will never create any misunderstanding to Islam to the people who are not yet Muslim. So brother and sister, once again, I would like to call you with the call of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, return back to the Quran and the guidance of Prophet Muhammad Wa billahi tawfiqi wal aqri da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته